Hi there, my name is Madeline and I'm from Los Angeles. Ever wondered if it was possible for a quiet college student to end up being the most feared person in juvie? Let me tell you how, but first, please like and subscribe. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was an eight-year-old genius and I was being called to the stage to collect my huge trophy for winning a science competition. In first place, Madeline Jones. Everyone cheered and I was beaming. I was already halfway across the stage when the announcer looked confused. Oops, it seems that there's been a mix-up. The winner is actually Tyler Lee. I'm sorry, Madeline. Everyone started laughing. I walked off the stage in shame and ran to the bathroom to cry. My friends tried to comfort me, but it was no use. After that day, I decided that something like this would never happen to me again. I'd have to become a perfectionist and be the absolute best at everything. And that's exactly what I did. I never lost another competition again, and I was always at the top of my class. I waltzed through the school's entrance on my first day at senior high school and tried to find my way around, but then I saw him. And I swear my mind went completely blank. He was perfect, and as he stared back at me, I could feel myself melting. It was like my mind and my body weren't connected. I walked forward and then, bam, I tripped and hit my nose on a locker. I could hear laughter all around me, and when I looked up, he was gone. I shamefully walked to my first class and sat down. Hey, look, it's Rudolph. <laughs> Your nose is really red. I wanted to disappear. As the week went by, it seemed that no one remembered what happened. So at least I had that going for me. But that Friday, I ended up spilling water all over my backpack and I had to carry my books everywhere. While I was rushing from math to physics class, I jumped straight into someone and my books fell on his feet. When I looked up to see who it was, I froze. He gazed into my eyes and I think I nearly stopped breathing. Hey, cutie. I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Don't worry about it. By the way, what's your number? I gave it to him and then he helped me pick up my books. I gotta run now. Talk to you tonight. I couldn't believe it. Did this hunk think I was attractive too? I watched him walk away and stared at his magnificent body, but I was suddenly nudged by two pretty senior girls. Hey, I'm Angela. Listen, I saw Blaze checking you out and I just wanted to warn you. He's no good. What do you mean? He's involved in some pretty bad stuff. Like what? He's in a gang, and he's been involved in all sorts of criminal stuff. Even the teachers here are afraid of him. He can do whatever he wants. The principal won't say a thing. That's how dangerous he is. I know he's cute and whatever, but I've heard you're a really smart girl, and it would be a shame to throw your life away for a guy like him. Wow, okay, thanks for letting me know. They walked off and I went to my next class. Later that night, I got a text from Blaze. What do you think I did? Turn my phone off and walk away? No way. Dangerous or not, he was hot. And that's all that mattered to me. We started off by texting each other, but we had so much to say that he just called me and we ended up talking until about two in the morning. I never imagined that I could fall for a guy so quickly, but it was happening. Our first date was super romantic. He took me to a little spot in the mall I didn't know about, and we got some fancy desserts. I love cake, but I loved staring at his gorgeous face even more, and every time he said my name, I melted a little inside. He stared at me like he was falling for me too. We went out a few more times, and he'd always been the perfect gentleman. I don't know what Angela was talking about until one night while we were strolling near the park after an ice cream date. A guy wearing purple crossed the street and started walking towards us. He looked really angry. No, Madeline, we have to run. What? Just take my hand and follow me. We ran for 10 minutes until we reached an isolated alley. Who is he? He's a part of a rival gang and they're out to get us. I'm sorry you had to see that. I mean, I could take him on, but I'm trying to be a gentleman in front of my lady. Then he went on to tell me about his life in the gang, but all I heard was blah, 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 because I could only focus on one thing. Did you just call me your lady? 
Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was meaning to ask you something tonight. What's that? Will you be my girlfriend? Of course, Blaze. I thought you'd never ask. So, you accept me and all my awful things I have told you about my life? Sure, I'll even join you if you want. The next week, everyone at school knew about our relationship because we were always hugging or walking hand in hand. Angela wouldn't give up, though. She saw me in the bathroom one day and tried to talk me out of my relationship. I told you, Blaze is not a good guy. He's nothing but trouble, and you're putting yourself in harm's way. Why do you care so much? Because you seem like such a great person, and he's a real jerk. We're just trying to protect you. I really hope you listen. It will save you lots of trouble in the long run. I rudely told her to get lost, and she left the room looking like she was about to cry. Later on that day, I felt sorry about that, so I went to look for her. I thought she'd be near her locker, as the bell had just rung for us to change classes, but she wasn't. I noticed that her locker was slightly open, and the curious part of me decided to take a peek. You won't believe what I found. There was a picture of Blaze stuck to the inside of the locker door. She had decorated it with little hearts, and on the bottom she wrote, Someday you will be mine. I couldn't believe it. She had a crush on Blaze, and she was trying to get me to leave him alone so she could have him for herself. At that moment, I just wanted to embarrass her, so I said loudly, Hey everyone, come see what Angela has in her locker. As the crowd gathered, I showed them what was inside. Some people took pictures while others just stared and laughed. Angela walked towards us looking confused. So you just wanted to steal my boyfriend, huh? What? No, I didn't put that there. Liar, so much for trying to protect me. I walked away and left her there to soak up the shame. My relationship with Blaze continued to grow. We did everything together. During the day, I helped him with his schoolwork, and at nights, I went with him and his gang on their nightly escapades. They were a pretty rough bunch, but they were nice to me because I was his girlfriend. I learned a lot, like how to pick a lock without anyone noticing and how to shoplift without getting caught. I could even hotwire a car. I started doing loads of things that would probably get me in trouble if I couldn't do them properly. Then one day, the leader of the gang asked me to join, and I agreed. Anything to be with Blaze and to make him happy. So I had to do more complicated things now. I participated in a home invasion, and it was scary as heck. We also did about five robberies and were successful each time. But my academic life was blossoming too. I was still the perfect student at school, and I had better grades than anyone else. My principal called me into his office one day for a meeting, and he told me that because my record was so flawless, he'd agreed to write me a stellar recommendation to get into one of the best Ivy League colleges in the world. When I told my parents, they were so proud, but I always wondered how me going to college would affect Blaze. Obviously, I wanted to gaze into his handsome eyes for the rest of my life, but have you ever heard about a perfect relationship between a gang member and an astrophysicist? It was hard for me to think about, so I tried not to. I just continued being an angel by day and a devil by night. But the devil part was getting harder because I kept getting assigned to more difficult tasks. Me and three other guys were told to burn down a rival gang member's house one night, so we went there and started doing what we had to do. It was a pretty isolated area, so we didn't have to worry about getting caught. But just as we were about to get into the getaway car, we noticed a girl standing by a tree. Hey, I think we have a witness. Get her. What? We have no choice. We have to kidnap her. One of the guys ran and caught her by the arms. He carried her and put her in the trunk of the car as we sped off. They drove to another isolated area and parked in front of an old building. They tied the little girl up in there and later, some other guys arrived. So what do we do with her? You know what happens to witnesses. I tried to plead with them because she was so young, but they wouldn't listen. Then they left the room for a while and I was alone with her. You're Madeline. I've heard of you before. What? Who are you? My dad is your principal. Oh my gosh. Please set me free. I, I won't tell anyone that you were here. I waited until everyone had left or had fallen asleep. Then I untied her. I drove her to her parents' house, then went quietly back to mine. But the next morning, I woke up to sirens. There were cops all over my house and my parents looked confused. 
you're under arrest for arson and kidnapping. Wait, what? The child told us everything. As a police car drove me away, I looked out the window and saw Blaze and some other guys from the gang hiding around the street corner. One of them signaled to me that as soon as I got out, I'd be done for.